Welcome to Unreal. Let's talk about blueprinting basics for beginners. I think most people bounce off of Unreal's blueprints. I did, lots, several times. My Twitter account, the stream is full of people bouncing off of Unreal and being amazed that anybody can use blueprints because they're so unwieldy. Professionals and hobbyists alike, coders and non-coders alike, everybody is unified in bouncing off of Unreal's blueprints. But now that I'm comfortable with blueprints, I don't think they're bouncing off of the blueprints. I think they're bouncing off of Unreal. Because the blueprints are when you actually dip your toes into Unreal itself. Like you start by putting down some stuff like, oh, I'll put down assets I have, here's a barrel I made, here's a cat I made, whatever. But at some point you want to have something actually happen. I need this barrel to explode when the player shoots it. I guess I'll go into a blueprint and set that up. Oh, will you? What's a bullet? What's a barrel? What's an explosion? You don't know anything about Unreal, so how would you know what these things are? How would you know how to even get them related on the blueprint? And that's the key to beginning blueprints. That's the key to beginners, you know, the beginner's approach to blueprints. Blueprints are almost always about connecting A to B. You want to connect Unreal thing A to Unreal thing B. And so in the case of an exploding barrel, you want to connect the act of the bullet hitting the barrel to the act of the barrel exploding. But in order to do that, you have to know where to look for the impact, where to look for the bullet, where to look for the explosion, all of that stuff. And if you don't know anything about Unreal, that's a tall order. So I'm going to teach you the architecture of Unreal from the perspective of trying to learn blueprints. With that in mind, this is Unreal 5.0.0, beta. Don't worry if you're using a different version. The windows might look a little bit different, but the blueprints are exactly the same. We're currently using the first person template. Do not use the first person template. This is the worst template I have ever seen in any game engine. Um, this template is personally responsible for costing me six months of time because I bounced off of it so hard twice. <sighs> but I do want to show you some of the things that misled me in the hopes that they won't mislead you. So while you shouldn't use this template, we will use this template. I'll show you some of the things that make me angry. One nice thing about this template, almost everything is blueprints. This, blueprint. This, blueprint. This, blueprint. So if it was set up so that you could learn from it, you could learn from it because it's using blueprints. However, it's not set up so you can learn from it. Good news. I can teach you how to use a blueprint even if the template can't. So we're going to select the player character here and then come over to details and pop open that blueprint editor. Here it is. You might start in the viewport or in the event graph. We're going to talk about the event graph for now. This is a blueprint. This is what you're likely to see. You've got all of these nodes connected to each other inside of comment boxes. Pretty standard affair for blueprints. This is a terrible blueprint to try and learn from, which is a shame because it's the first blueprint you're likely to see. The reason that this blueprint is awful is this shit. You see this crap here? All these dangly things? You see how they've even got crossed wires and S-shaped overlapping curves? Those are all real spaghetti techniques, and there are ways to format your, your setup so it doesn't have those unreadable lines, but they didn't bother. To make matters worse, the reason for all of this crappy spaghetti crap is because they implemented full support for VR and hand tracking in their example template. This is all VR and hand tracking crap. Even if you are among the 0.01% of Unreal devs that actually want to make a game involving VR and hand tracking, you don't want to learn Unreal with that shit on your head. Your template for beginners should be as simple as possible so that people can learn from your example. Not cluttered with VR shit. And in fact, if you go through and manually delete all of the VR and hand tracking shit, it's a great little, uh, little blueprint. You can learn from it really well. 
we're not really talking about this kind of blueprint. We're talking about this kind of blueprint. Hmm, pretty basic, right? Connecting thing A to thing B. We're connecting input access turn to the controller's turn input. Yaw, turn, same thing. Input access lookup gets connected to the pitch input. Connecting thing A to thing B. Very straightforward. Maybe we'll add in like multiply the access value by the sensitivity value or something, but very basic stuff, right? Sure, but um, what's an input access? What's a controller? What can a controller do? What can an input access do? This is why people bounce off. A blueprint looks simple, but you're connecting things that you have to understand. And if you are new to Unreal, you don't understand any of this. For example, how are you going to make your character jump? If you look up a tutorial, you might get something like, oh yeah, every frame, you know, every tick, you should check and see whether the player has pressed space, and then you can apply an upward vector to a physics object, and uh, you could just do this. This is the big thing about making games in Unreal. If you are a newbie making an indie game, 99.9% .9 of the things you want to do, there's an easy way to do it. It's already provided for. How do you want to do double jumps? If, if you were going to do double jumps in this blueprint, how would you do it? Oh, I forgot to tell you. Uh, this actually natively supports double jumps. You just have to change the number of jumps in the character movement component. It actually supports triple jumps and quadruple jumps as well. You don't have to change anything in this blueprint. This blueprint is fine as is. Obviously, there are some exceptions. Like if you're trying to do special effects with a shader, I don't want to get started on that. But for blueprints like this, for making things happen in the game world, there is almost always a way that is just a couple of nodes. You're just doing some very, very basic stuff. The trick is figuring out which parts of Unreal you need to connect. And I can't teach you that because Unreal is huge. But I can tell you how I think about it. For me, I think about it in terms of three different categories of things that we might want to connect here on the event graph. One of those kinds of things is the system. So input actions, input axes, things like these. These are system events. Uh, you can also do things like system outputs. We could do a print command. We've also got other things like uh, mice. You can turn the mouse cursor on and off. You can lock it or unlock it. Or uh, you could find the screen resolution. Or you could access a file. Those are all things that aren't in the game world. They're not part of the scene or the level that you've loaded up. And so I think of those as system-related calls. And that's largely just a matter of understanding how to get what you need. Like if your instinct is to check every tick to see whether the player has pressed space, you're not using Unreal very well. Because what you should do is you should create an input action bound to space. And then instead of checking every tick, you just wait for this input action to fire. It's much better, causes much fewer bugs. But you have to know that these input actions and these input axes exist as a concept. In this case, these are in the project settings down in input. Look up, look up, turn, turn, jump, jump. They're right here. So even if you start a completely blank project with no bindings, you can just create these bindings. It's very straightforward, take you two minutes. You can also add ones. If you need a jump, uh, if you need a jetpack button or an up button or whatever, you can just go ahead and add new bindings and it just works. If we want these, if we want more of these, we just right click, type in input axis or the name of the axis we're looking for, and there they are. We can just add one. Boom. Easy as pie, right? This is why understanding these kinds of, of interactions is important. You have to know what you're trying to connect to. And in this case, we're making sure the system is telling us when something we want happens. And it's available everywhere, right? We can just right click and type 
input axis and then it just appears and where are they? What happened? This is why it's important to understand the context of what you're doing. System calls are not universally available, although it depends on the kind of call you're making. Input action events are events. And therefore, they move only through the allowed event flow. This is a function. That's what this f means. This particular function, a construction script, is called virtually anytime anything changes anywhere. Uh, the construction script gets called a lot. So this is an automatic function, and you can add stuff to it if you need to relate your components to each other or whatever. But it can't receive input events because it's not an input graph. It's not an event graph, rather. This is the event graph. It can take events. Not just input events. It can take all sorts of events because it's an event graph. The thing about this, this event graph is bound to an actor. And that's the second kind of thing you're going to be wanting to interact with on your graph. So your blueprint might be doing a system call, but it could also be interacting with an actor. This whole thing is an actor. And these graphs, these are on the actor. All of the variables here are on the actor. The functions are on the actor. The event dispatchers are on the actor. So what is an actor? Well, according to Unreal, an actor is an object that can be placed or spawned in the world. And it's a core class. A lot of things descend from it. Pawns are descending from actors. Characters are descending from pawns. If we look into actor here, there's a lot of stuff that descends. We got sky spheres and cameras and HUDs and internal tool frameworks. We got loads of stuff that descend from actor. Out here in the world, actor, 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 actor. Everything is an actor. Here's the thing that Unreal doesn't make clear. Actors are not a structural concept. They do not provide structure. And this is why when people talk about, oh, actors are game objects. No, actors are not game objects. Whoa, that is going to kill you if you try to think of them as game objects. Actors are a nexus through which events flow. From a blueprint's perspective, an actor is simply a channel for events. This is a really important distinction. And I know some of you are, are thinking, what is he talking about? Yeah, let me go ahead and describe a real problem with thinking of these as game actors or game objects. Because actors don't understand that other actors are a thing that they might have a relationship with. This is an actor named Editor Cube 8. This is an actor named Editor Cube 9. If these are game objects, we can put Editor Cube 9 inside Editor Cube 8. And now they're chained together, right? So Editor Cube 9 is a child of Editor Cube 8, right? Right? So if we were to delete Editor Cube 8, oh, look, it didn't take Editor Cube 9 with it. And if we were to copy Editor Cube 8, oh, we didn't get a copy of Editor Cube 9. This is behavior that doesn't make any sense if you're thinking of these as game objects. And this isn't an idiosyncrasi this isn't idiosyncratic. This isn't just something that happens only here. Actors do not go inside of other actors, not in any meaningful sense. Their transforms can be linked so that they move together, but they're not related. They're not dependent on each other. If you try to think of actors as game objects, you will end up creating astonishingly convoluted solutions for things that should be very simple. Let me give you an example. You make a door. You've got a door frame, you've got a door panel that opens, and you've got a, a door keypad. You want the door to open when the player hits the keypad. How many actors are involved? Is the keypad an actor? Is the door an actor? 
In Unity, every one of those would be its own game actor. In Unreal, there is one actor responsible for everything that happens to that door. And that actor might also be responsible for the rest of the room. Who can say? It depends on how you set it up. Because the door frame, the door keypad, and the door itself, those are all components. That's the third kind of thing that we're going to be using. So if we were to go into the character again, here we are, go into the viewport, this here is an actor on top. These are components. Some of them are scene components, some of them are actor components, but either way, they attach to the actor. These actually do things, and they have structural, structural relationships to each other and to the actor. So if you're making a door, then the door frame is a component, and the door movie panel bit is a component, and the part that opens is a component, and then of course the touchpad is a component within the same actor. Because the actor is just a nexus for events. It doesn't exist to create the structure of the door. It exists to push events to the door and read events from the door. Once you understand this, blueprints start to become a lot easier to understand because components are what do all the work. The actor is just a way of making sure the events are going the right place. Everything else is components. If you want to render something, you use a component that renders something, like arms. You want to have a camera? Well, that's a component that can view things. You want a collider? Well, that's a collider component. All of these components do things, and they all have their actions that they want to take, and you can use those. You can connect to them. But you don't want to try and do that here in the first-person character. The first-person character is a really bad way to do it because this is a terrible template. The first-person character is an astonishingly convoluted beast with a lot of functionality in it that um, normally wouldn't be in an actor, but it's a special case. So we're going to not use it. We're going to uh, create an actor in a different way. Let's go ahead and start from nothing. An actor. We're going to call this Bumpy. Bumpy the actor. We're going to drop Bumpy into the game world. There he is. We can't see him. We can't interact with him. Well, that's because Bumpy doesn't have any components. Bumpy is getting all of the events that Bumpy would ever need. The force. It binds us. It compels us. It flows through us. So Bumpy gets tick updates and physics updates and key updates and all that jazz. But he doesn't need any of them because he has no components. He's not doing anything. So we're going to open Bumpy up. And we're going to add in a component. Let's add in a, a cube. This is a cube. It's a component that does a lot of work. It renders things, it has colliders, it can even have physics. Lots of stuff done by the cube. It's a multi-purpose component. We're uh, able to see all of the various things we can change about it over here. See all this stuff? Let's change the material so he stands out from the crowd. Oh look. There's Bumpy. Uh, uh. By default, the cube is something that we collide with, so we have standard physics operations on it. Woo! So that is the nature of Bumpy. And if we move Bumpy around, we are moving the actor, not the box. So just to show you that, if we come back in here and we copy this box and paste this box, oop, and move it up, and maybe shrink it down, Our actions here in the scene will never move just one box. They'll always move both because they're all bound to the actor. They're structurally linked within the actor. We can technically get around that by coming over here and selecting them from this list, but we're not going to do that. That's got nothing to do with blueprints. The point here is that Bumpy it now exists, and we want to make Bumpy do something. Let's make Bumpy into a landmine. When the player touches Bumpy, Bumpy will kill the player. How do we do that? Well, first we can delete this extra cube. Now, we have an event graph. What we need to do is connect Bumpy touching the player to the player dying. How do we do that? 
Well, we could just drag this cube on. That'll give us the cube itself. Hmm, but there's probably an easier way to do it. I don't want to have to like bind events or anything like manually. So when we select this component, it's got all these functions, right? Is there an easy way to just tell it to tell us if something bumps it? Because that sure would be nice. Like if the component got hit and it could just fire off an event. That would be super cool. Oh, there it is. Uh. Yep. So it's always a matter of figuring out what you need to get connected. And sometimes you're going to need to go out and fetch something from the system. Sometimes you're going to be able to use a component that's already in this object. There's a lot of ways that you can set this stuff up once you understand the sorts of things you're trying to connect. And in this case, we still haven't killed the player. So how do we set up a, a kill the player action? Well, we simply tell it to destroy the other actor, right? There we are. So now when we do that, hit play, and uh, oh, we died. We're dead. Similarly, normally bullets bounce. But if bullets hit this, that's really loud in my ears. I've got it turned off for you, but that's super loud. So now it destroys whatever hits it, which is all fine and dandy. But if it destroys whatever hits it, we want the player to die. We want the game to end. We want, the, we want that to cause uh, a respawn or a game over or whatever. So how do we do that? Well, the naive approach would be to come in here and say, okay, well, here we should, you know, game over however we want to do it, right? But that means that any time we kill the player, we're going to have to remember to tack on an extra event at the end where we manually end the stage every single time. That seems like it's a little bit burdensome, which means it's the wrong way to do it. Because if we come over here to the first person character and we go into the event graph, we can actually, ooh, that's new. My mouse malfunctioned. We can actually come over here into functions and see we've got all these overridable functions. Oh, look at all these beautiful functions. And you know what? Aha. Obviously, I'm just printing, but you could also end the game or respawn or whatever you need. And that means that regardless of how the player character ends up destroyed, you get that printing in the corner. And in case you missed it, I'll do it again. We don't have to manually link the act of destroying the player to the act of ending the level because we understand the event chain. We understand that when the player is destroyed, that will automatically create an undestroyed event. Now, sometimes that might be the wrong call. You might not want to do that. For example, if you have a situation where the player can take over a mech and you destroy the player's original body once they get in, you know, so they can get into the mech, that may end up ending the level early if you just do it naively. So you do have to understand how these things work. You can't just, you know, take advice and always do it that way because it's going to be wrong for different kinds of games. You have to understand how these things work and find the approach that works for you. And if you do find the approach, it's going to be like two or three nodes. It's not going to be big. It's not going to be complicated. It's going to be quite simple. This is one of those situations where it's hard to overstate how important it is to understand the Unreal Engine well enough to actually use these blueprints because that is what the blueprints are the blueprints simply let you use the unreal engine now with this in mind how about we make this block explode 
when it's trying to destroy an actor. So we can go back in here and we can, in addition to, that's the, uh, that's the player character. We'll just delete that. Uh, in addition to destroying actor, let's also destroy ourselves. There we are. And you can see that it defaults to self. So now we are destroying the target and we're also destroying ourself. And now it's a landmine. So if we run into it, we both die. But if we shoot it, it goes away. And we could easily spawn in a particle effect or something similar. I'm not going to, just because that would extend this unnecessarily. But you could. You could make an effect where that explosion happens. So let's talk about relating actors to actors, because this is one of the things that is something you'll have to know about, something you'll have to be able to do. So if we come over here, let's say that we want all of the bumpies to explode in a chain when any bumpy explodes. How do we do that? Well, the easiest way to do that is to create an event or to create a variable that links to other bumpies. In this case, we're going to go ahead and create a variable. An event is very nice. I use events extensively in my ship construction game so that when a ship system changes, it notifies the ship and so on and so forth. But in this case, I think we're just going to have a variable named next bumpy. And we will call that, uh, uh, we will change that from a Boolean into a bumpy. See, there's a bumpy. So now we've got a variable named bumpy. What's this? What's this? Oh my gosh, look at these events. Bump, 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 bump. So how do we tell Bumpy what the next Bumpy is? Well, let's go ahead and create some more Bumpies. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. There's now four Bumpies. When we click on these Bumpies and scroll down, oh, I forgot to actually turn it on. Hold on. <laughs> One of the things to remember, um, variables have this little eye icon. See these options up here? This I means that it's private, or as it's, sorry, it's, it's just not public. So we have to click on that to open it up. That's this instance editable here. That will allow us to actually set that variable when we're in the scene view, which is kind of what we want to do. Sorry about that. Forgot about that for a second there. Now when we, did we forget to compile it? No, I compiled it, right? Yeah. It's probably just in a spot I didn't see. There it is. Next bumpy. See this? We can just... Pick the next bumpy, bumpy two, and then bumpy two can connect to bumpy three, and then bumpy three can connect to bumpy four, and then we can have bumpy four connect back to bumpy one. Why not? So. Oh, it goes backwards. That's fine. Did you like that? This is an example of how easy it is to connect things in the game world. All we did was create a variable on Bumpy that pointed to another Bumpy, and we could fill it out here in the scene. And the variable itself allows us to create events just by clicking. And this is custom. If we were to create another event, we could call this special Bumpy discount event. We now have an event called Special Bumpy Discount Event. And if we come up to Next Bumpy, there's our Special Bumpy Discount Event. See? This is how easy it is to use blueprints to connect things if you understand how these things work. The actor, Bumpy, is responsible for channeling events. It's a nexus of events. And we're creating new events, and anything that knows it's a bumpy can simply listen to those events. It's this easy. Now, obviously, I haven't covered everything you could possibly want to know. I just wanted to give you an impression of how I think about things. We've got, we've got the ability to put in these, these uh, simple um, 
elements here, these, these uh, scene components, and these are very valuable because they do all the work. But we also have the ability to channel events from actor to actor by simply referring to other actors using variables. Once you start to think about things like this, I think you'll find that it becomes pretty easy to think about how your blueprints should be laid out. When you need a function, when you need an event, when you need a variable, it should just flow pretty naturally once you understand how things can work. Part of that is understanding what exists in the game already, and part of that is understanding what can be made to exist because an actor can fire off events. This is my first um, Unreal tutorial, and my voice is basically gone because I did a lot of takes. I hope it's coherent. If not, let me know what you didn't understand, and I'll maybe try again. Have a good one.